And now, let's head out to talk with one of the best golfers to ever play the sport, Julie Inkster. Julie Inkster, great to be with you here today. Thanks, Chrissy. It's always great to be with you. Thank you. Yeah. We always have a we good have, time. We do. Yeah, <laughs> it's like sitting on a green couch just talking. That's right. Every, <laughs> with, with the iconic Julie Inkster. So, uh, lucky me. Yeah. I wanted to talk to you a little bit. You know, I was just watching a video about you and some of the uh, amazing accolades that you have had. The Bob Jones Award, all of your wins, all of your victories through the years, the ESPY, the Golf Digest Awards. Does this resonate with you when I say you are the rock star and kind of like where your place is in this world and how many people you've impacted? You know what, it, you know, I look back on it and, and I realize, um, you know, I've just kind of lived my life and I've kind of tried to live it the right way. Uh, I, I really think winning the Bobby Jones Award really um, resonated with me as far as an award going, how, how how much I've maybe made a difference in golf mm -hmm. and and people. Um, you know, you don't win that award just because uh, you're a good golfer. You mm -hmm. win your award, the award because what you do outside of golf. And you know, I've never, I've never really thought of it that way. But uh, you know, hearing someone like Morgan Pressel talk, um, you know, who's a really good friend of mine, about you know the influence I had on her, and you don't really realize. Um, um, as you're going through life, that how you can help people and impact people, and you know, it might just be a little thing, but um, I, I think you know, having my girls uh, uh, introduce me for the Bobby Jones Award, you know, um, you know, when they start traveling with me at six weeks on tour and, mm -hmm. and where they are now in their life and and uh, where I am now in my life and, and with golf and, and personal life, um, it, it just, I don't know, just kind of hit home that, you know what, it's been a really good ride. We've talked so many times about how you got started mm -hmm. in this game of golf and mm -hmm. what influenced you the most and kind of what kept you going. You're such a resilient person. You're such a determined person. Was there someone in your life who had similar traits who kind of got you into the sport but yeah. also kept you going in the sport? Well, I mean, I, I, my mom and my dad were a big influence on my life. My mom you know, was a stay-at-home mom but and not competitive at all but stubborn, hmm. resilient. <laughs> there, I got that from her. Huh. Yes. My dad was, played professional baseball for a few years, so I'd probably get my athletic ability from him. Um, but uh, my dad was a worker bee. He worked two jobs. He was a fireman and his days off he worked another job. Um, and at 15, I had two older brothers. At 15, we had to get a, a job. Um, and so I rode my bike up to the golf course. You know, I didn't play golf. Um, got a job parking carts and picking up the range. Decided, you know, I was a jock. I played basketball, I played football. Whatever my brothers played, I played. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, they beat me up a little bit. Um, but I feel like golf was something I could do that they weren't interested in. So, I mean, I actually got some lost and found clubs and that's how I started playing. I'm a huge proponent of women helping women and women helping girls, not being threatened to do so, yeah. not feeling like we can't do that because what if they get more than we get then? Exactly. But how do you feel about kind of that whole um, notion that women really do need to help girls in, in our lives, and in I our think, world. I think it's weird. I think a lot of times women don't help women. Yeah, and it, it drives sure. me crazy. Um, but I think we're getting better at that. Um, I hope you're right. Yeah, uh, I know, um, you know, the biggest uh, compliment I ever get is someone coming up and asking me a question about uh, either being a mom on tour or um, can I play a practice round with you mm -hmm. or to me that's the highest honor is when someone does ask you that because that means that you're open to um, giving advice and you're open to help grow the game not only on the golf course but off the golf course. Well and you know that kind of principle transcends whether it's corporate America or in other sports, exactly. in grade school, high mm -hmm. school, college, all that, that whole principle of really helping others and wanting to mentor them on their journey seems to be like we are all as women planting those seeds for empowerment, for success, for thriving and yeah. for giving us equity. Yeah, and I, I don't think there's anything better than being a mentor, than, than you know, someone calling you and say, hey, you know, what do I need to do here? Or, or um, I just think that's the highest honor of that one, you're, you're 
doing something right. Yes. And um, you're opening yourself up. Um, you're being vulnerable that, you know, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you everything I got. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to talk a little bit more than about women and equity mm -hmm. in terms of the purse. You talked before about what did you make? You said your very first check on tour was how much? $22,500. And as a 23 year old, I thought that was a lot of money. Yeah, indeed, but, right? Uh, what year was that? If I 1983. 83. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, it's getting better with people like KPMG and AIG and um, Chevron. Mm -hmm. um, they're doing uh, a great job of elevating the women's game. but. Um, we have a long way to go. We, we make about 10% of what the guys make. Mm. That's not a lot. How do we change that? What needs to happen in order for us to get to the level where women are on equal oh. playing fields and par with, with so to speak? Par, nice. <laughs> a nice little pun there. Word. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we need, um, we need more awareness. Um, we need to play better golf courses. Um, we need uh, TV. Revenue. I mean, we we pay for our TV. If we want to be on network TV, the LPGA or the sponsor has to pay for TV. Um, so um, it's you know we're and we're we're um, an organization that stands on our own. We don't have any help. Mm. We don't have the PGA help. Um, you know, like the Champions Tour does and the Corn Ferry does. It's it's you know I, I and I I look at the PGA Tour and the whole live right now how they're they're competing against how do we make more money? It's like you know how do you share more money? You know <laughs> share a little bit. I mean Send how much over. do you need? Mm -hmm. You know if you get to a point where it's like you know it, you know golf has always been you know a rich man's game and well they're they're showing it that it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I just want to say thank you, Julie Inkster, for being the living legend you are, for being the inspiration you are, and just for giving us the gift of you. Well, thanks to you for being a rock star mm -hmm. and growing your occupation, and we got it. We've got to support women, right? Yes, we do. And you have always been great at that. And thank you. not only, you know, housing players, you know, you didn't know Love from, them. but you know what? They're your family they now. They are my family now. Yeah, and oh you know my what? Gosh. I, when I was a rookie. I stayed in 90% of, of, of housing, and I still am very in close to all of them. Oh, it's so the it's the best. It's but a gift thank that you. keeps on giving. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Thank so. you, Julie. Thank you, Christy. Mm -hmm.